NHRL's World Championship is just around the corner, coming up on December 6th. So let's take a look at the top three seeds in each weight class. Let's find out their keys to success and how they qualified this year. The number three seed in the three pounders is Mako. From Julian Papazian out of Connecticut, it's a two-wheel drive overhead saw robot. Mako wins by those gnarly one-shot KOs with his deadly saw, with the skilled teamwork between the two bots that make up Mako, and a hard-to-knock-out TPU construction. Julian and Mako earned their spot at World Championships this year with a second place finish in November after a major reconfiguring of Mako into a multibot. That's right, for this November tournament, it is a multibot again. And it's different from 2024, it's perfectly even. So Mako's two pounds, the red bot over there, Frendo is two pounds. Besides that, it has the same exact weapon system. So I'm keeping all of my attacking fury. They don't really look like it, but besides the arms, these are essentially the same robot. So I actually have the ability to swap in a saw on Frendo, but for most matchups, we felt it's just more beneficial to have the ability to lift an opponent. So Frendo is sort of in charge of leading the charge. It has stronger front armor, has stronger ground game. So they're sort of my forks. They get under the opponent and then I come in with the attack. You get nervous before a fight? Not really. Once the robots are down inside the cage, it's sort of, it's time to have fun. The number two seed in three pounders is Caldera. From Glenn Boxel out of Massachusetts, it's a two wheel drive mid cutting horizontal. Caldera wins by consistently hitting really hard with that horizontal blade. By being ultra prepared in the pits and never lacking for spares, plus the iterative improvements that he's made over a career spanning five years and 130 matches, means he's worked out all the kinks. Glenn and Caldera earned their spot at World Championships this year with a second place finish in April, plus a perfect 7-0 dumpster run in June. I have been wanting this so bad for a long time, and I finally got one! Well, Glenn, here it is! This is yours! The number one seed in the three pound class is Jelly Baby. From Paige Clayfield out of Maryland, it's a two wheel drive lifting control bot. Paige wins fights with Jelly Baby through her stellar error free driving, her squishy impact absorbing armor, and the ability to manipulate opponents into doing the thing. Jelly Baby has never been KO'd across 41 fights. And on her path to the world championships this year, she's only lost twice to Impact and Jackalope, both bots that will be at World Championships. But her crowning achievement this year is dumpstering twice. The number three seed in 12s is Maximizer. From Jake Hoffman out of Kentucky, it is a two-wheel drive Thagomizer horizontal spinner. Maximizer wins thanks to Jake's dedication to improvement from event to event, his wise application of engineering principles, and a right hook that just doesn't quit. Jake and Maximizer secured their world championship spot back in February with a second place finish, followed by another second place in May, and then ultimately defeating the reigning champ Slam Plan for first place in October. It's Jake Hoffman from Maximizer. Jake, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm ready to be here. I'm ready to be at Champs, man. So most recently, I've been working on my configuration for Slam Plan and Huge. So that re-inverts the robot so that I'm blade side up. I want to have that high blade so that I can really cut in to the wheels and hit closer to the axle. Are you prepared for full court this year? Full court benefits from the same thing because it's the highest cage to weight ratio. He can really take advantage of the fact that he's big and can move around and, and take up massive swaths of the arena and really make the arena smaller for his opponents. Uh, you know, I, I think I got it. I've got a strategy no one's thought of. Just drive around it, bro. Just just oh. drive. Just, oh, just drive around it, forehead. Oh, super prepared. So compact verts is one of the first things that I designed Maximizer to beat. Promheta, I've also fought him the most. So I'm, 
I'm pretty concerned about that fight. Prom Hat is also the only robot to beat Maximizer twice. Do you have plans for all the different archetypes that are represented at World Champs? For sure. I at least have a general knowledge of how I'm going to configure my robot going into every fight. Uh, Ricky called it the Swiss Army Knife of Pain, and I intend to live up to that title. The number two seed in 12 pounds is Buzzkill. From Liam King out of Maryland, it's a two-wheel drive undercutting horizontal spinner. Buzzkill wins by circling his opponent until the perfect strike reveals itself, by handily removing the wheels of his opponents, and by having the resource and support of both the Honeycrack team and the University of Maryland team. Liam and Buzzkill took their second ever dumpster in November this year, with a 6-0 run to earn their spot at the World Championships. The number one seed in the 12 pound class is Slam Plan. From Brendan Steele out of Ohio, it is a two wheel drive, big wheel vert. Slam Plan wins thanks to Brendan's regimented testing and improvement schedule, which leads to a blade profile unlike any other in the league. He has a design that preys upon the prevalent compact verts present in the 12 pound class, and he has the ability to rip open his opponents like a can of tuna. Slam Plan is the reigning champ who averages only one loss a year, and he got that out of the way in October, where he finished second, qualifying for the world champs. The number three seed in 30 pounders is Megatron. From Jamison Go out of Massachusetts, it's a two wheel drive hammer saw. Megatron wins thanks to a honed front end package that seldom fails at scooping up his opponent. He's got an overhead attack that can devastate top armor and send shockwaves through to every component. Plus he has decades of experience on the sticks, making him one of the league's best drivers. The reigning champ in 30s secured their spot at world championships with a second place finish in June. And out of 11 events, Megatron has only missed the podium one time. The number two seed in 30 pounders is Chonky. From Brian Epstein out of Georgia Tech, it's a shuffling full body spinner. Chonky wins thanks to their massive 360 degree weapon with no good angles of approach. Their stable and effective shuffling system, which nets them an extra 15 pounds. And a hive mind of brilliant engineers at Georgia Tech behind its design and construction. Chonkeev is last year's runner-up, who has only been defeated by last year's champ, Megatron. And their dumpster winning run in February had a pair of one-hit KOs with zero matches going to the judges. In the 30 pounders, the number one seed is Ares. From Ryan Duarte out of MIT, it is a four wheel drive, vertical spinning beater bar. Ares wins with a devastatingly destructive attack, and it's driven with pinpoint precision and backed by a team full of smart, capable engineers. The MIT team and Ares world championship spot was secured with a flawless run in October, but they made it to the finals in all three of their qualifying tournaments this year. It honestly feels like 2025 has been a buildup to real championships and winning the Golden Brett would be awesome. I feel like I'd walk away disappointed if anything less. Who do you think is the biggest barrier in your way to that Golden Brett in the 30 pound class? Everyone says Chunky and Chunky's on there for sure. But I feel like there is a really weird lack of fear for Emulsifier this year. And I don't understand it because that thing is horrifying. As a driver and competitor, I don't want to fight them again. As a fan, I'm sure you guys all want it. Yes. And I think, it'd be, I think it'd be cool, but they are for sure the one robot I would rather not face at championships because we know that we come in with two Aries, we're for sure coming out with one after that fight. So with world champs this year, who do you think is going to win? Okay, I'll say it. Yeah. For 30s, I, th I think it'll be us. Yeah. We wouldn't have put in this much work if it was going to be any other way. I'm, you know, I mean it. We don't show up for anything less. I think we're taking 30s home this year.